everyone and welcome back to my terrace and to this other online class. For today we're gonna go for a power flow. Um, so let's start sitting on the heels. All you're gonna need today is either a couple of blocks if you have them at home and if you don't have blocks you can use um, cushions or pillow or folded blanket. We're not gonna really, we're not really going to use them, it's more to feel comfortable or if sometimes you don't reach the floor you can use it that's why a book can help and um, yes or if you feel like too much pressure on the knees sometimes a block or a pillow can also help like for example now that we're going to start sitting on our heels like if you have knee uh, problems or sensitive knees or injuries sometimes it helps to be sitting on a block like i am right now or if it's, this is too much for your knees, you can also place a blanket in, underneath. If this is impossible for you because it's like super painful, you can sit cross-legged. Actually sit in any position that feels good for you. The only thing I'm going to ask you is to have the shoulders back and relaxed and your back as straight as possible. So we're gonna start centering here and bringing all the attention to the mat. So we're going to close the eyes. The hands can be facing down palms facing up or you can place one palm on top of the other and close the eyes here make sure that your back is straight your shoulders are relaxed <coughs> excuse me so we're not crunching and let's start deepening our breath let's start breathing in through the nose and breathing out through the nose maybe you want to bring your right hand to your belly and feel how the belly expands every time we inhale and how the belly button goes towards the spine every time you exhale so try to forget the noises that surround you and just focus on your breath try to feel your belly every time you breathe in and completely empty every time that you breathe out. Let's create a pattern of breathing here. Your own rhythm. We all have different rhythms. And just try to follow this pattern for the rest of the practice, this rhythm. You can release your hand down again and keep breathing deeply, leading up through your nose. Every time you inhale, your belly raises but also your chest raises. And when we exhale, we try to lift the chest high and we just empty the belly. Let's take a few more breaths in here. And on the next inhale, let's open the eyes. Hello. Let's keep your pattern. So let's keep breathing at the same rhythm for the whole practice, for the whole class. And now inhaling, let's stretch the arms towards the sky, interlace the fingers, palms facing up. And now let's bend towards the right. Inhaling, come to the center, and now let's bend towards the left. Good, again, inhaling right, come to center, and exhale left. Good, inhale, come to center, and now we're gonna twist towards the right. Inhaling, come to center, and now we twist to the left. Ah, we go back to center. Good, let's bring the arms into cactus pose or goddess. And I'm going to inhale and open the chest. And on the exhale, I'm going to bring the arms together and I'm going to round the back. Inhaling, open the chest. Imagine a cat cow. But instead of lying down, sorry, instead of on the hands and knees, we are sitting. So inhale, I try to bring my shoulder blades together. I look up towards the sky. And on the exhale, I round the back and bring my arms together. One more time. Inhaling, open. Exhale. Release. Good. And let's go back to the cactus arms. Now inhale, stretch the arms, shoulders down, 
and exhaling cactus. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Good, keep moving. And exhaling, nice. One more time. And exhale, good. Let's release. Let's bring the weight forward, get rid of the block. And now let's come into our hands and knees position. Just try to bring the knees underneath your hips and the wrists underneath the shoulders. And now let's do a cat cow. So inhale and look up. And now on the exhale, I look down. Again, inhale and arms about look up. And on the exhale, down. One more time. Inhale up. And down. Good. Let's go to center. And now I'm going to straighten my left leg. Try to keep your hips square because it's very easy to open them. So let's try to keep them square. Foot is active. And I'm going to straighten my arm. I'm going to keep looking down towards the ground so my back is straight. And I'm going to hold it here. On the next inhale, I'm going to release. And I'm going to do the opposite side. So now my right leg goes back and my left arm goes towards the front. Keep breathing here. Engaging the core. And release. Okay, let's do the other side once again. But this time, let's add some movement. So inhaling and bring elbow to knee. And exhale and extend. Inhaling, elbow to knee. Extend. Elbow to knee. Extend. Elbow to knee and hold it. And release on the exhale. Let's do the other side. So, right knee out, right leg out, left arm out, and now breathing, out, extend. And extend. Again. Extend. And again. Exhale and extend. Coming back and hold it here. Very good. Let's reset our tabletop. And now inhale and look up. And on the exhale, look down. Good. Let's tuck the toes. And now let's press the toes against the mat, the hands against the mat, and let's lift the knees a few centimeters. And release. Again, inhale and lift the knees. And release. And again, lift the knees. And now start pushing your hips back. Good, and let's go for the first downward facing dog. So make sure that you're placing your hands right, you externally rotating your shoulders, and now let's bend one knee, and the other. And then bend one knee again, and the other. Let's walk the dog. Good, just go into a neutral downward dog, dog position, and now inhaling on the tiptoes, Exhale, bend the knees. Inhaling, go on the tiptoes. Exhale, bend the knees. One more time. And bend the knees. Looking towards the front. And step all the way towards the front of the mat. And stay here. Bend the knees. Chest, chest against the thighs. And grab opposite elbows. And allow yourself to relax here. The neck is totally relaxed. Actually, I'm going to interlace the hands behind the back, push up. We keep breathing with the same pattern we created before. And I'm going to release the hands towards the mat. And vertebra by vertebra, I'm going to roll all the way up towards the sky. Extending the arms, interlace the hands, palms facing up, and give myself a nice full stretch. Good, release, bring the hands towards your lower back, and inhaling, just go as far as you can. You can allow your head to go up, uh, sorry, towards the back again, as well. And go back to center. Good. Let's make sure that the feet are hip distance width apart, quadriceps engaged, core is engaged, shoulders back and relaxed, and your palms are facing towards the front. 
My chin is parallel towards the ground. And now inhale it, right the arm up. And on the exhale, hinge from the hip, bend the knees, go all the way down, touch the ground. Inhaling, hands and shins, flat back. Exhaling, hands to the ground and step into a plank. Because we are still warming up, we're going to bring the knees down, the chest down, and I'm going to inhale into a cobra, a small cobra. Then tap the toes and down with facing dog. Good. Just reset your dog. Externally rotate your shoulders. Bend the knees if you need to. And on the next inhale, look towards the front and step towards the front of the mat. Hands on the, on the shins, flat back. Exhaling, hands to the ground. And inhaling, let's go all the way up. And exhaling, some sleepy hip. One more time. Inhaling, arms up. And on the exhale, hinge from the hip all the way down, bend the knees. Inhaling, hands to the shins. Exhaling, hands towards the mat and plant. Again, knees down, chest down, and inhaling into a cobra. This time it can be a bit deeper. Tap the toes and downward facing dog. Good. Take a couple of breaths here with the down dog. Try to keep your spine as straight as possible. And on the next end, inhale, bend the knees, look in between the hands and step forward. Inhaling options, you can bring the tiptoes, the tip, uh, fingertips on the ground or on the shins. That is completely up to you. Exhaling, relax down. And on the inhale, let's raise all the way up. And exhaling, samasiti hip. One more time, inhaling, arms up. And on the exhale, let's hinge from the hip, go all the way down. Inhaling, flat back. Exhaling, hands to the ground, arms up. Let's go for the first chaturanga. So hold the plank, bring the weight slightly forward, start bending your elbows towards the back, don't touch the mat, and now here, inhaling into an up dog. An up dog, I'm placing all the weight into the top of my feet and my hands. And then tap your toes and downward facing dog. And take a breath here on your downward facing dog. On the next inhale, bend the knees, look in between the hands, and step, jump, or float, float forward, flat back. Exhale, hands to the ground, and now let's raise all the way up. And breathing out, some sticky heat. Last one, inhale, arms up. On the exhale, let's hinge from the hip, let's go all the way down. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, hands to the ground. And chaturanga, let's go. Inhaling up dog. And exhaling, downward facing dog. Just take a breath in here. And a full breath out. Bend the knees, look in between the hands, and step forward. Flat back. Exhaling, hands to the ground. And let's inhale, raise all the way up. And exhale and summon city heat. Nice. Now let's step the right foot back. The right foot is more or less 45 degrees. And the hips are not open towards the side. The hips are open towards the front. You can even open your feet wider for balance. Make sure your hips are squaring. Option one, grab opposite elbows. Option two, if it's available, just do your reverse namaste. Whichever option you choose, the front knee is extended, but don't block the knee, always micro bend it. And now inhale and open the chest, and on the exhale, let's go all the way forward. Let's start stretching the front hamstring. Make sure that the back hip is pushing towards the front, and try not to collapse into that front knee. Keep breathing here. Inhale, let's start raising all the way up. Good. Keep the hands where they are. And now let's pivot the feet. So we're going to start, we're going to look towards the other side. So now the right foot is our front foot. We can reset the feet here. So the back foot is like 45 degrees. Hips is 
deeper into the water front. And now I inhale, open the chest, and on the exhale, I'll go forward. Make sure you don't collapse into that front knee, and make sure that your back hip is pushing towards the front. Breathing. Let's try to keep following the same pattern that we created at the beginning of the class. And now, inhale and let's come up. Good. Let's pivot the feet towards the front of the mat again. Let's step forward without missing your balance. Let's release your hands and you can shake your wrists because if you do reverse namaste, sometimes it can be a bit intense. Nice, inhaling, arms up. And on the exhale, let's go all the way down. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, hands to the ground, and let's go for Chaturanga. So inhaling down, sorry, inhaling into an abdo. And tuck the toes, downward facing dog. Good, now let's bring the right leg up towards the sky. And now on the inhale, let's bring that right leg in between the hands. Good. And I'm going to raise here into a high lunge. Good. Bring the hands into Namaste. And now let's twist towards the right. Oops. Not losing your balance. Nice. And just hold it here. If this is too much for you, you can always bring the back knee down. But if you want to challenge yourself a little bit, let's keep it up. Good. Keep bending this leg 90 degrees. Take one more breath in here. Full breath out. And now inhale and go back to center. And now let's come back up. Give yourself a nice stretch. And now let's hinge from the hip, go down. Inhale, halfway down. Back into Chaturanga. Inhale into an up dog. Tuck the toes and downward facing dog. Good. Now let's bring the Left leg up towards the sky and in between the hands. Good. And let's raise up for your high lunge. Good. Let's twist towards the other side. So bring the hands into Namaste. Oops. Good. And now inhale in a grow and exhale in a twist. Good. Take one breath in here. Full breath out. Inhaling, come to center, and we bring the arms up and the foot back. Good. Exhaling, hinge from the hip. Inhaling, halfway up. Exhaling, hands to the ground. And hold the plank here. We're going to hold the plank. Sometimes we do plank and we do this. So try to bring your bum down and bring the low ribs, lower ribs towards your belly button. <clears throat> Excuse me, and hold it here. Hold it here. Keep breathing. Very good. And now let's drop the knees and let's go for child's pose. Just for a couple of breaths. The next inhale is push yourself back again into your plank. Good. And now bring the right knee in the middle and back. And the left. Let's do some mountain climbers. Inhaling. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. Good. Hold the plank. And now start bringing the hands towards your feet. And let's raise all the way up. Nice. Exhale and hinge from the hip. Walk the hands towards the front. Drop the heel for an up dog. Good. And then tap the toes. Downward facing dog. Good. Let's go for lizard pose. So let's bring the right leg up towards the sky and towards the front of the mat. I'm going to remove the blocks so you might be able to see better. Now, both 
both hands are on the inside of the right foot and I bring the weight forward. Actually, you can drop the back leg down and bring the weight forward. Let's just start opening the hips a little bit. Good. We're going to go for the first challenge here. But first, I want you to bring the right hand towards the right knee and open the knee towards the right and the chest too. Good. And keep breathing here. Keep pushing the weight towards the front. And on the next inhale, let's go back to your lizard pose. And let's go for the first challenge. I'm going to move myself a little bit towards the back because I don't want to, I don't want to eat my own little wall. Okay, let's try to do flying lizard. I haven't done this in ages, so I'm going to try it with you again. So I'm going to bring my right hand underneath the leg. So I'm going to try to bring my shoulder underneath my knee as much as I can. I'm going to tuck the toes of my back foot and lift the knee up. And now I'm going to bring the hands slightly forward and I'm going to try to squeeze my foot back, bend the elbows and lift. Hold it and release. The funny thing is to get out. So I'm going to open the hip again, bring the hand down, step into a plank, drop the knees and sit back on the heels and shake the arms. Okay, maybe today was to try. For me, because I have done this since I dislocated my knee, so I don't know if my doctor or my physio see this, they will be very happy with me. But um, it was a good challenge for me to try again, and I guess for you to learn. Maybe the next day we can try to hold it at least for like five breaths. But at the moment, let's try to do the left side. So let's go into plank. Let's do it chaturanga. Inhaling into an up dog. Tuck the toes and downward facing dog. Good. And I'm going to bring the left leg up towards the sky and in between the hands. Bring both hands to the inside of the foot. Drop the back knee. And just let's work here in opening the hip for a little bit. here. Full exhale. And I'm going to open the hip. So placing the left hand right. on the hip, sorry, on the knee and open everything towards the left, including my chest. It's okay if the foot lifts. If the foot doesn't need to be on the ground, it's okay if your outer, your inner foot lifts. Okay, on the next inhale, let's go back to the lizard. I'm gonna step a little bit back. My terrace is a bit reduced for experiments like this. Let's try to do, again, a flying lizard. The left is my wrong side, so this is a challenge for me as well. So let's bring the arm underneath the, the leg and just try to bring the shoulder underneath the knee as much as you can. Make sure you place your hands firmly into the ground. When we do this, don't place the palms. Use the fingertips. I call I call it spider hands. I think I talked about it in the shoulder video. So basically, I use the hands like this, like like the spider. Um, I do believe you got way more support by using your fingertips instead of your palm. So just yes, make sure like you're grabbing the ground properly. So. Again, let's bring the hand underneath. Make sure that you make your hands like you grab your mat properly. Let's tap the toes of the back foot and lift the knee. And now this is the hard bit. It's kind of like moving that foot back. Let's bend the elbows and let's try to lift. Yes, and hold it. Hold it, keep breathing. And release. And the funny thing is to get out of this pose. Let's go into plank. And now let's push yourself into the outward facing dog. 
If you want to go for a vinyasa, feel free. Okay, let's go for a vinyasa. Let's go into plank. Chaturanga. Inhale and up dog. Tuck the toes. And down facing dog. Take a breath in here. Full breath out. And now we can drop the knees down. Sit back on your heels. And I'm going to explain the next pose is crow pose. So, I normally explain crow pose using the outside of your knees. Because then it's crane pose, which your arms are straightened and your patella is right on your tricep. I do make difference in between one pose to the other. I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but that's how I learn it. So, to do crow pose, because crane is like another level that we can try another day, but to do crow pose, we are gonna come into Balasana. So just bring Malasana, sorry. Bring the feet, keep distance width apart. No, actually wider than hip distance. Toes facing to the outside. If you have sensitive knees or injury like I do, let's bring the block and let's sit down. On the block. This is called Malasana or Yogi Squat. Normally you put your arms into the Namaste position and with the elbows you press the knees towards the side. Obviously the block is cheating but this can be too much pressure for the knees. Now I warm up quite a lot so it's okay but I cannot stay here very long. For some of you it will be very easy, for some of us like injury is hard. You know, so don't feel guilty if you want to use your block. So, after being in Malasana for a couple of breaths, we are going to lift our bump slightly. I'm going <laughs> to... Really, I don't want to hit my head. We're going to bring the hands. I'm going to slide close my feet here. Bend the elbows. And I'm going to place, like I was explaining before, I'm going to place the outside of my patella, the flaps, the inside of my patella into my triceps. So I hope this makes sense. I'm placing the hands down. Some people do the knee straight away. I think that is for crane. For crow at least the outside of the knees. And I start going on my tiptoes and back. If you've never done that, I recommend to do this a few times just to feel comfortable. If you're scared to try, just put a few pillows so you know. Safety first. And I'm here and I bring one feet up, foot up, and then I bring the other foot up. Good. And my big toes are touching. And I keep looking towards the front or down. And hold it here. And release. Good. You can try, of course, if you are advanced enough to go for crane, do so. Um, I haven't tried crane since, you know. My injury and I don't feel safe to try yet, but if you want to do a break, it's basically the same thing, but your arms will be straight, your knees will be there, and you will have to hold yourself. Like I said, I don't feel safe enough to do it right now, but you know, in future classes we can try. Um, yes, I was going to say something else, but I've, oh yes, if you find very difficult like this, you can always use the, the trick of the block, so you can put a block underneath your heels. You can go here into your little spot, place the hands on the ground firmly, lift the butt up, bring your knees, and maybe you want to step on the block, and that will make things slightly easier. Good. Now that you all try to the crow pose, let's sit, extend the legs and just shake them a little bit. Okay, from here, I want to do to a hip um, opener, an adductor opener. So what I recommend for you to do is to roll your mat this way. This is just to protect your knees. Okay, so once you have your roll mat, like a spaghetti, I want you to open your knees as wide as your adductor allows you to. Let's go for frog pose. 
your legs are in an L shape. So that's why it's called frog, frog shape, frog, frog pose. Okay, focus, it's called frog pose. So your legs are in a straight angle, like a 90 degree angle. And then I place my forearms on the ground. Like this is like pretty easy so far. And now I'm gonna start pushing the weight towards the back. So by doing this, you should feel a very intense stretch on your inner thighs. If you don't feel that stretch, try to open your knees wider and try to push back. I'm gonna put my timer and we're going to be holding this at least for a minute. So keep pushing back. This is a pretty intense stretch, so try to relax your head. Maybe you wanna grab a block or something and just place your head there. And now let's go back to the breath. If you lost your breath during doing the flying lizard, or the crow, maybe now it's time to go back to the breath pattern that we created at the beginning of the class. Send the way back. I know this pose is horrible. I promise you, you feel really good afterwards. Just a few more seconds to go. Good, and very slowly bring the weight forward. You can bring the, the legs too close. You can do a pillow with your arms. Leave your legs and just make your hips from side to side to release. Let's go back into our feet. Let's place the mat on one. And let's sit down on the mat. Good. Let's keep working on the hips. Okay, for those who can, for those who can place, let's, okay, for those who can place your shin parallel towards the mat and the opposite shin on top, please go for that. Like I explained before, I've got an injury, so that is like completely impossible for me right now. And for those who cannot place one leg on top of the other like this, you can close, cross your legs like I'm doing, and try to make sure that more or less one ankle is underneath the knees. I hope this makes sense. Okay, now inhaling here, open the chest, and on the exhale, Let's start bringing the hands towards the front and breathe here and try to go as far as you can. Let's go back to that breathing pattern that we were doing at the beginning. Feeling the belly and emptying the belly. And on the next inhale, let's work up. And now let's change legs. So whichever leg you have in the back, now it's in the front. Again, you can try to put one leg on top of the other, like a double pigeon or you can cross leg, legs like I'm doing, bringing your um, ankles underneath your knees as much as possible. This time, let's bring the hands behind your back, open the chest, breathe in, and with the chest open, let's start bringing the hands towards the front. And allow yourself to relax here, to sink, and open your feet, uh, sorry, your hips.
we uncross the legs and we lie down on the mat. Good. I'm gonna go slightly back so that's that's an blinding. Okay, so now we have the soles of the feet on the ground, and now I cross the right leg on top of the left. Okay. Lift the left leg up, thread the needle, so my right arm is in between the legs, and you can either wrap your shin and start bringing the leg towards your body, or you can wrap your back thigh and keep the leg straight or 90 degrees. That is completely up to you. So you choose your option. And the only thing I'm going to ask you to do is for this knee not to come out, for the right knee not to come towards your chest, to close the hips. So I want you to open the hips. So if you feel that the right knee is coming too close to your body, use your right hand to push that knee out, while with the left, you push in your knee in. I hope this makes sense. You know, explaining things online is not very, it's not very easy. So yes, yeah, so bring the left leg against the chest, and the right knee out. You're going to breathe in here. The sun is going to move. The right foot is active, so it's very easy to forget about the foot and just let it. Be floppy somewhere, so just try to keep it active. Try to keep your whole leg active and try to rotate your shin externally. I know that sounds quite difficult, but try to rotate your shin like towards the outside to protect the knee. Okay, one more breath in here. Pull breath out. And we can release. Good. Completely. Cross the right leg on top of the left, and now bring both legs towards the chest, and hug your both legs towards the chest. Foot, feet are active both the time. Let's release and let's bring both toes of the feet on the ground. And now let's cross the left on top of the right. Let's bring the right leg up. We thread the needle so now the left arm is in between the legs. And again, you can wrap the back of your thigh between the leg 90 degrees or straighten, or you can bend and push against or pull against your chest. Now, the left knee, don't allow the left knee to come close to your body, so with the, right, uh, with the left hand, just push that knee away. So it's like different actions. One leg is coming in, one leg is coming out. Yeah, I keep the left foot active, and I externally rotate my shin bone. the legs but close completely the left on top of the right and then hug both knees and breathe in again the chest and just take a quick workout of the legs. and breathe in, relax the legs, separate the legs. And now we're going to open the legs slightly wider than the mat. So the feet are actually outside the mat. Soles of the feet on the ground. I'm gonna extend the arms towards the side and I'm gonna bring both knees towards the right. I'm gonna to put the right foot on top of the left knee 
and I'm gonna look towards the left. Make sure that your shoulders are grounded. Inhaling, come up, bring your left knee, bring both legs towards the center. Let's slightly move the hip towards the right, bring the knees towards the left, left foot goes on top of the right knee, and I look towards the right this time. Make sure again that your shoulders are grounded, close the eyes here, enjoy, enjoy spinal twist. Inhale and look up, free your left, your right knee, just bring the knees pointing towards the sky. Let's do a happy baby. So bring the knees in, arms on the inside, drop the outside of your feet, feet pointing up, and let's move from side to side. And tell me who doesn't enjoy happy baby. Now let's release, We're going to Shavasana, the best of yoga. This is like when you go skiing and the best part of the skiing is remove your boots. So <laughs> Shavasana is kind of the same thing. So let's make sure that our neck is straight, chin is slightly against the chest. Relax your legs, feet open towards the side. Take your own space. Palms facing up. As my neighbor talking, he's also So I'm gonna say goodbye here. Enjoy your shavasana. Stay here in between five and ten minutes. Allow yourself to be heavy to sink on the mat. Um, Thank you very much. And Namaste.